there are plenty of ways buildings and infrastructure can get destroyed. From natural disasters to bombings, there are many ways a building can be leveled. And while controlled demolition might have some similarities to explosions and collapses, it's a far different beast. It is, after all, controlled. That doesn't mean it's any less spectacular, though. Here are the top five building demolitions and implosions. Number one, Seattle's iconic King Dome. On number one, we have Seattle's iconic King Dome, which was demolished in a controlled implosion on March 26, 2000. Sparks from a 21.6 mile web of detonation cord flickered over the rib surface of the dome, followed by 5,800 gelatin dynamite charge explosions, and the 25,000 ton roof collapsed into a billowing dust cloud in less than 20 seconds. Thousands of spectators cheered from office towers and hillsides around the city as the series of blasts crumbled the former home of the Seattle Seahawks and Mariners. The Kingdom, dubbed the Mushroom and other less charitable terms over the years, was completed in 1976 at the cost of $67 million, and the Seahawks made their debut in the Kingdom that year. The dome was a necessity in the rainy city, but fans complained that the concrete stadium was too small for football and not intimate enough for baseball. What's more, it leaked, and in 1994, four 15-pound ceiling tiles crashed into the stands just hours before a Mariners game. The final Major League Baseball game in Kingdom was played on June 27, 1999. Though the Kingdom was demolished in 2000, it wasn't until 2015 that King County collected enough money to pay it off. Through hotel and motel taxes, the debt was paid off about nine months early. Number two, JL Hudson Department Store. With the press of a button at 5.47 p.m. on October 24, 1998, Detroit Mayor Dennis Archer dropped the JL Hudson Department Store from his city skyline and into the history books and record books. Hudson was the tallest department store in the country and was second in square footage only to Macy's anchor store in New York. It dominated the retail market in the city through the 1970s before closing its doors in 1983. The store was built in 12 separate stages, the first in 1911 and the last in 1946. The complex had two retail basements and 23 above-grade retail floors, including mezzanines. Two additional basements and six upper stories in the tower provided storage and mechanical support for the 2.2 million square foot building. In all, there were 33 levels in the structure. In the fall of 1997, the Downtown Development Authority of Detroit retained a joint venture of Walbridge Aldinger and Jenkins Construction of Detroit to manage the project. The demolition contract went to a joint venture between Detroit-based Hallmark Inc. and Boston-based North American Site Development. They in turn retained Control Demolition Inc., CDI, and the Lizzo family of Phoenix, Maryland to design and perform the tricky implosion of the Detroit landmark. No structural drawings of the facility were available, making structural analysis and implosion design a considerable task for CDI. The interdependency of the 12 different construction stages with different construction and variable column flange directions and bay widths created what CDI calls differential natural failure modes in each section of the structure which CDI's demolition program had to cope with. CDI had to sever the steel in the columns and create a delay system that could simultaneously control the failure of the building's 12 different structural configurations while trying to keep the hundreds of thousands of tons of debris within the 420-foot by 220-foot footprint of the structure. Under CDI's direction, a 21-man crew needed three months to investigate the complex and four months to complete preparations for CDI's implosion design. During that period, the lower two basements of the structure were filled with engineered fill, and the perimeter basement walls were bermed to first basement level with soil to support perimeter walls, which would surely have failed under the soil and hydrostatic loads once the horizontal support of Hudson's internal structure was removed by implosion. Double column rows installed in the structure between vertical construction phases, internal brick shear walls, X bracing, 70 elevators, and 10 stairwells created an extremely stiff frame. Columns weighing over 500 pounds per foot, having up to 7.25 inch thick laminated steel flanges and 6 inch thick webs defied commercially available shape charge technology. CDI analyzed each column, determined the actual load it carried, and then used cutting torches to scarf off steel plates to use smaller shape charges to cut the remaining steel. CDI wanted to keep the charges as small as possible to reduce air over pressure that could break windows and adjacent properties. CDI's 12-person loading crew took 24 days to place 
4,118 separate charges in 1,100 locations on columns on nine levels of the complex, over 36,000 feet of detonating cord, 4,512 non-electric delay elements, and 2,728 pounds of explosives would be detonated during the demolition. When the dust cleared, a debris pile averaging 35 feet tall and as high as 60 feet tall where the tower had stood was all that remained of the venerable Detroit department store. Number 3. K-25 Tennessee Built as part of the Manhattan Project in 1943, the K-25 Gaseous Diffusion Building at the East Tennessee Technology Park once stood as the world's largest building under one roof. In 2013, the Department of Energy finished a years-long demolition process that started in 2008, the largest the organization had ever undertaken. Unlike most demolished structures, however, K-25 lives on in the form of a three-story scale representation of the demolished building, which holds authentic equipment from the historic building. Number 4. Eighth Tower, Germany Almost one ton of explosives inserted into the 1,500 drilled holes was used to raise the so-called Eiffel Term, or the Eiffel Tower in Germany, standing at 116 meters, or 381 feet. Police estimate that more than 10,000 people gathered in the center of Germany's financial hub, Frankfurt, to watch the spectacular demolition. The building is the highest ever in Europe to have been demolished using explosives. Explosives expert Edward Reich was in charge of blowing up the 50,000-ton skyscraper, which was completed in 1972. To keep the spectators and nearby construction safe, barriers of up to 6 meters high were erected around the skyscraper. Water canisters, each containing 1,000 liters, were blown up along with the building to stop too much dust from being produced. The whole area was sealed off with 500 security helpers in attendance. The Eighth Tower, until recently, housed facilities of the Department of Social Sciences and Education at Johann Wolfgang Goth University. It was briefly the tallest building in Frankfurt. Two new high-rise office buildings are to be constructed on the site. Number 5. Noida Supertech Twin Towers, India And last but not least, we have the Supertech Twin Towers in Noida that were brought down in a massive explosion. More than 3,700 kilograms of explosives were used, and the towers, Apex and Cayenne, in Noida Sector 93A, were the tallest structures in the country demolished in a controlled implosion. The blast, lasting about nine seconds, caps a nine-year legal battle between residents of Supertech Emerald Court and the realtor over the two towers. The nearly 100-meter-high structures, taller than Delhi's iconic Kutub Minar, were brought to the ground in seconds, literally like a house of cards by the waterfall implosion technique. Following the demolition, the next challenge for the Noida authorities was to clear the mountain of debris. The officials had informed that about 55,000 tons of debris would be generated due to the demolition, which will, in turn, take months to be cleared and dumped at designated areas. For the demolition, over 5,000 residents of Emerald Court and adjoining ATS Village societies in Sector 93A have to vacate their premises. Traffic diversions were planned, and guidelines were laid down to tackle any emergency. The two towers were rigged with over 3,700 kilograms of explosives. Explosives were inserted into nearly 7,000 holes in the pillars of the buildings, and 20,000 circuits were set. The blast was planned to ensure that the towers fall straight down in what's called the waterfall technique. If you liked the video, please consider subscribing and sharing so we can keep bringing more content like this. Also, let us know your thoughts in the comments below. See you next time.